Hey everyone, Erwin Fishkeeper here. I hope you're all having a good weekend and you've had a good week. Uh, today's video is really, what I'm going to do today is, it's based on some of the questions I've received, and in particular about the garden eye, the killifish, uh, the ones up here. Now I've made a video on how to breed them, but I had quite a few comments and I had some questions around, yeah it's great, you've told us how to breed them and you, sh you, know, and you showed us how to take the eggs. But what about actually rearing the babies? Is that a difficult process? Is there anything special? Um, you know, how's best to go about it? So what I've done as well is I've done some experimenting to see what produces the best results for the eggs if you remove the eggs. Now, interestingly enough, I remove eggs every now and then out of there now. Um, and in this tank, Every, you know, every couple of weeks I'll, or every week or so, I'll grab two or three youngsters that are not tiny, tiny, but I'll grab them out here and I'll pop them in the tank next to it. Now, since I made the last video and I showed how to remove the eggs, if you have a look at this video footage, which is of this aquarium over here, you can see that they're actually coming on really nice and, and they're growing and there's, there's some really nice males developing in there. But let's get back to what I've done from an experiment point of view and what testing I've done. So I've done a couple of things. The one is to leave the mop in, take out eggs every now and then and see how that goes. And, you know, the parents are probably eating some of them, but there's, there's definitely those that are surviving and then they get moved out into another aquarium. So that's one option. Um, but I guess it depends on, on your, your pair that you've got, if they eat the babies instantly or if they try and eat the eggs um, in the mop or whatever the case is. So for, for this video we assume we're removing eggs. We're not leaving with the parents. Now the first test I did is because my view was well let's maybe if we have the water a little bit lower pH um, we by so doing I'll remove any of the risk with fungus on the eggs or anything and hopefully we will then get good hatch rates. Now to do that I took a little container which is this one here and it's got some peat in it and I filled that up with water no plants or anything just the peat and in there I've done the experiment with 10 eggs now peat method way below 50% hatch rate now it's difficult to say if it was because the eggs weren't fertile or if it was the method that I used, but I didn't get good results trying the peat method, and, that's, and I've tried it on more than one occasion, not this one occasion. So I've tried it on more. The results with the peat, me peat method for putting the eggs in and allowing them to hatch in the peat has not worked the best. Then the next method I did is I said, okay, what we'll do is we'll just take some tank water, which is this one, we'll put a piece of plant in there, and that's it, we'll drop 10 eggs in there and we'll, we'll leave it and we'll see how it goes. Again, better than the peat method, but no higher than 50% success on the hatching. Now, that was, in my opinion, you know, when I could see the eggs at the bottom, it looks like quite a few of them got fungus on them. Now, again, they could have been infertile. My view is I don't think they were infertile when I took them out. They didn't look infertile. And... My, my feeling is that when I put them in here, left them here, because I don't use any aeration in here neither, um, is that some of them got fungus and, and that's why the hatch percentage was, was quite low. Then the next method I, I tested was to, again, looks very similar to the other one, but really is taking a container, putting a piece of plant in it again, and this time adding a anti an antifungus something now whether that be meth blue or whatever you want to use and that has produced the best results so hatch rates well above 50 percent probably in about the 80 percent mark now what i do is i use this product uh, you don't know i've got multiple products but this is the one i've used recently which is multicure from blue planet um, that's what it looks like okay and now the question is, how much do you put in? So what I do, I thought I'd show you my method of deciding how much I, how much I put in. Because I just want to tint the water. That's all I want to do. So I've got a little container here with clear, 
with clear water in, I just take a paintbrush, the back of a paintbrush, and, and be careful with the stuff because it stains everything it touches. I then take the, the, the brush, pop it in, and it almost creates like a little drop at the bottom. And I mix that in and it starts getting just the blue tinge. And then I go and I grab a second one. And that's it. That is how much I put in. I don't, I only put it in the first time when I'm dropping the eggs in. Okay, and you can see that's what it looks like. And that's it. A piece of plant on the top and then drop the eggs in. Now in, in the container that does about, that's been 80% and above using that method, there's a couple that have just started hatching out in here and they're really tiny. Uh, this one's got two or three in uh, that are a couple of days old so they're doing fine and this one has got one, one or two in um, and they're doing okay. Now from a feeding point of view, I don't worry about infosoria for these guys. Um, don't worry about vinegar eel. What I do do is I feed them uh, freshly hatched or newly hatched brine shrimp. And because the containers are quite small, just be careful that you don't overfeed because you'll foul the water, there's no filtration in here. You're really just relying on the plants to do the work for you and there's just a small piece of plant in here anyway. Nothing major. Um, I keep it under light as well on top of the this bank behind me. They, they rest on the top there. Uh, so that, you know, it gets a bit of algae and stuff growing in there. No problem, I leave that because you know that helps keep the water condition better. So newly hatched brine shrimp is all I feed. If I'm running short on newly hatched brine shrimp because I've you know um, put in one day and I've used too much and I haven't got enough the next day to feed the other the other fish, um, I also use micro worm and, and if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I always keep microworm cultures going. So that's all I do. I then feed them in these containers till they get to a size that you can feel comfortable. You know, where you can see the nice pink bellies swim. You know, when they swim around, they've got nice little pink bellies. At that stage, if there's a few of them, like four or five, I probably will then move them. So, so let's call it about two weeks. I will then move them out into one of the 20s. Now the challenge in this 20 year is that the ones that are in here are already uh, probably too big, but I've got on this tank on the end here, uh, there's probably three or four youngsters that I've put in there, and that's it, I just feed them in there, same brine shrimp, everything else. Um, and even these guys here, I feed them brine shrimp still as well. They, they're starting to get some frozen food now, the bigger ones, so starting to take it, but otherwise brine shrimp. So guys, that's, that's really it. For those that ask the question, so how do you rear them? Um, just to summarize, what I would say is plastic container, use whatever size container you want, uh, put a piece of plant in it, use some antifungal medication, um, I use, like I said, the back of the paintbrush to put it in. Just get it that, you know, just that little bluish color or bluish green, depending on the medication you're using. Some plant in there, pop the eggs in there, wait till them start hatching. Once they've hatched, newly hatched brine shrimp, feed them for about two weeks in that container. Don't overfeed because you'll foul the water. For about two weeks in that container, um, and then you can move them to a bigger one with better filtration. And when you're using something like these 20s that have got the mat and fault in it, it's ideal because they can't get sucked into anything. There's plenty for them to nibble off on the sponge because these are well-established aquariums have been running for a while. If you're worried about your water condition, use airline tubing, siphon off a little bit of water and then just top it up carefully. Um, just top up the water again for them. All right, guys, that's it. I thought I would just do this quick video on how to actually raise the garden eye. Um, really easy fish to, to get going and once they're going, removing the eggs and actually getting, getting the fry and graying them. Um, not difficult at all. And at the moment, well, where I am in the Gold Coast, there's definitely a shortage of these guys. 
it's not many shops around that have them. I only know of one, maybe two that have them at the moment. And then I only have one or two as well. So, you know, if you're looking at reading something different, uh, you know, these guys are definitely worth a go. All right, that's it. If you have any further questions around this, just let me know. And I'll either answer it in the comments or I'll do something at a later stage um, on them again. Uh, the principle that, that, I've, that applies here is the same that applies for the little orange killer, the Australis or Australian, Australis I think it's called. Um, same principle applies, same method, same everything else for them as well. All right, guys, have an awesome weekend further. Uh, have a good week. Stay safe, look after yourselves. Till the next video, Urban Fish Keeper out.